Are you working on your author career, but struggling to get that first book published? Does the goal of being an author seem too lofty? Or thoughts of having multiple books and making a full-time living are as fantastical as living in Cinderella's castle? Welcome to Discovered Wordsmiths, a podcast where aspiring authors can be heard. Join Steven Schneider as he finds and talks to authors you may not know, but authors that have gotten their foot on the author career path. Hear what they've done to get there and where they want to go now. Settle back. It's time for a bit of inspiration and advice. Come listen to today's Discovered Wordsmith. All right. Well, JD, welcome back uh, to the second half of the podcast where we talk more author things. And our topic, we're going to talk about uh, critiquing. Um, But before we do that, Uh, You have written a couple books already, and you're working on more. So what are some things you have learned that you're doing different now than you did at the beginning? Um, What am I doing differently? Oh, that one's... Let me... Let me me look at my notes. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Uh... uh, are, is there any software uh, that you're oh, using I, now that yeah. you didn't or uh, any like like for me, when I first started, I had a lot of my sentences start with ing words, which is one of those things that's kind of frowned upon. Uh, so that was something I had to learn and do different. Uh, and I know a lot of authors start off uh, using like some software and doing something different. Um, you know, some people outline and or don't outline and then they learn to outline things like that. So just anything that you may be doing different or learned that you are doing now. Now, I, I think it's, it's not, I think learning to write the whole time, I, I don't see, cause once I incorporate that in, I'm not realizing that I have like, I realize that I've learned it, but I can't, I can tell the difference, but I more, it's more of what I have learned about, writing that I think that everybody should know that you don't realize when you start writing is that like once you publish then it's like you have to market we it's not like it's not like you, you get to like write and that's all you get to do it's like okay well, I have to go out and t- tell people about my book. I have to do, this is the the big one for me, which I've just started doing. I can't believe I'm doing it as I'm doing speaking engagements. Wow, I, nice. I was just like, no, no, I will never do that. I will never do that. <laughs> and now I'm doing them because I can do them online. So it's like, oh, I can do that now, but I'm still like, I, I just realized how much you have, there's so much more to writing than just writing. It's like, you have to market yourself. You have to be on social media all the time. And I'm not, I'm not an attention kind of person. I, I actually don't like attention. I like attention for my books. I, I like them. It's like, they're separate from me. You can like my books, but I don't want you to, to, you know, I don't want any attention at all. But I, I really, it's almost like I've been writing for like 20 years and I, but I've, as a hobby writer, but I think I've been doing it as a professional for like three to four years of really doing it all the time and stuff. But even now I'm like, maybe I should have waited and published because now I don't have as much time to write because I'm always doing something for my books. Like now I'm doing the audio for my books. So that's a whole new thing that I'm doing that I didn't expect that I'd be doing or speaking or marketing and social media. And it's just like, I, it's like, can't I just like have enough money so I can hire somebody to do that? So I don't have to do that. So I can just write. I just want to be in my little hidey hole writing on my little books. Everybody leave me alone. Let me write on my book. I, I think a lot of authors have that feeling and they, come into it with, you know, well, I'm going to write and have a big successful book and then I won't have to do anything but write all the time. And there's a lot of authors that fight that, uh, the, uh, I don't want to do anything except write, uh, you know, but 
I agree. I, I don't think very many authors have that choice. <laughs> Not new authors starting out anymore. Right, right. And like these publishing houses, they're great because they, they do their best, but they they have a lot of authors. Yeah. So even though they they are special to you and they, they do publish you and stuff like that, you really have to be aggressive and, you know, do I, it's just hard. I'm not an aggressive kind of person. I just, I'm, you know, I think I'm a lot like my characters and okay, I'm over here. I'll be quiet. I'm just. <laughs> so how are you uh, getting the speaking gigs I, and where have you been doing those? I actually was invited to um, a classroom. So I did a, a one in a classroom and then I had a librarian who asked me to do, she was having a library event. So I got to go to different classes and she had it at the library. So I did it in online in, she was in Kansas, they were in Kansas. So I just did the online event when I could get on there and nice. answer questions and, and talk. And she, actually, she, you know, she, she's been very helpful. She's finding me more people to she she loves the books so she's like oh we got to find other people so she's been helping me which oh, is that's I, great yeah yeah it's it's nice when someone else too is enthusiastic about your books and wants to help you out so that's but i i was surprised that i actually like the speaking engagements that i was just kind of yeah i was very and, and were, you, were you mostly speaking to kids or adults i was speaking to kids so, Were you talking about your book or, or, or about writing itself? Um, both. Both. Okay. So they could just ask me questions. I, I need to get more organized. But like I said, that's another thing that I'm going to have to do that's going to take away from my writing time. Right. You know, it's all these little things that you just don't think about. And, you know, you need to prepare for certain things. <laughs> Right. So, you you know, doing this obviously is marketing. What are some other things you're doing with marketing? You talked about speaking gigs. You talked about uh, the contest to p put your book out there. Uh, is there anything else you're doing to get the word out to get, you know, do some marketing? Uh, well, right now I decided I am taking um, this uh, writing course from the Rupert Writing Academy <laughs> and yep. uh, where we met. Yep. And so um, they were saying you should do something crazy. So my do something crazy is I am posting on Instagram for a writing challenge every day for the month of May. Nice. So I am not that type. I It's so hard for me to do that kind of stuff. So I've been doing it every day so far. I and and speaking of the Rubart Writing Academy, um, you know, James L. Rubart is wonderful. I, I know there's tons of courses out there. There's tons of things like this, and um, I, I've I've gotten several. I've looked at several. I, I'm assuming you've seen some of them out there, also. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and what makes this one the Writing Academy with James and Taylor is. It's not just, um, okay, write, and, and let's work on getting you published in an email list. They start off with talking about your brand and how to brand and how people think about buying. So it's a very comprehensive thing uh, that's more than just write a book and put it out there, uh, which I think is unique to a lot of these types of things, which in my mind makes it a, a very good course. Oh, yeah, because especially, too, because they're focusing on the marketing that all of us writers don't know how to do. Right. And and they want you to have the thing of it is, is they're setting you up for a career. They're not just right. setting you up for, you know, oh, just get out a couple of books. They're helping you prep for your career. Right. Yeah. And and a lot of authors. And I think that there's a lot out there that would look at it, go, well, you know, I don't want to talk about this. I don't want to talk about this. I just want to, how do I get my book so I can sell it? And it, they're missing the point. That's exactly what the course does. Right. <laughs> it's right. just, you know, not a, not the typical, well, if you take this pill, all your answers will be right there. It, it doesn't work that way. 
Um, so JD, we were going to talk about critiquing, and this is an area I think a lot of authors have trouble with. Um, so uh, let me ask, uh, what? Tell me about some of your critiquing experiences. Um, I I will. I'm going to start out with. I had like I was in a critique. I was in like. I had this great God story where God brought me to this amazing critique group that just had ended up having like award-winning authors. We had an agent in there. It was like a big deal, but I, I don't know how, I mean, God just put me in there. So I had a good, I, I had a good start, but now I'm, I don't have a critique group. I don't have oh. like a writing partner and I'm just like exactly the opposite. But, um, which I'm trying to figure out myself, do I need, a, you know, I think I need a critique group. I do have for, I have people who will read my books, but they're not necessarily writers. They're, you know, just readers. So, um, but more of, I think what I, I know very well about critique is how to, to accept one and what to do with it. And I was going to ask you about that. It, it, was it easy for you to accept critique or has it been difficult? Um, I, I am very good at receiving critique and I, it doesn't, I've only had one bother me. I have this, I have this great story about critique just because, which I am going to share because it just really kind of, gives you an, a good example of two different, it's a critiques on the same book. So when I submitted Melanie on the Move, I submitted it the exact same thing to two different contests. Okay. So one, I, I ended up winning and the other one, I got back one of the most hurtful critiques I've ever had. Oh yeah. And I was just like, and I, I've, I, I'm an analytical kind of person. So I think I, I, I'm okay about it because I can analyze it to death until I can understand it and process it. So it, she, I think it was more, she was, cause she was kind of making fun of my writing and I'm like, how could you make fun of me? You know, uh, I just don't under, I don't mind you critiquing me, but making fun of me is just a little bit too much. I can't, the, I can't there's, handle that. There's no, no, that's not critiquing. That's, you know, there's no place for that um, at all for anybody. I, I have told people before, I have no problem if you want to tell me what you liked or didn't like and what is good and not good and suggestions and anything like that, even if you absolutely hated it and you tell me why you hated it, I'm good with that. But when it's a personal thing, that's not critiquing that that's, I, I hope you've avoided them since then. Right. I have, I have. So, but the thing of it is, is I think she was just trying it to be clever in the way she was telling me like, Oh, you did this. Ha ha ha. You know? And I was just kind of like, but the thing of it was, Okay. Even though I didn't like her critique, what she said, I changed because I knew she was right. <laughs> I didn't like how she told me. I didn't like that at all. But she was still right. And I think a lot of people that, you know, when you get critique, you need to like, you got to analyze who who's critiquing me. Is this person? Because a lot of people, too. I will critique them and they just will just blow it off. And I'm just like, uh, I, I've been, you know, I've been writing for like 20 years. You don't have to, you know, j at least listen to what I have to say. You know, I'm a reader too. I've been reading like practically my whole life and, you know, they just want people to say it's okay. And it's like, well, if you, if you want right. me to just tell you it's good, I mean, I can tell you that, but, uh, I mean, do you want to get better? So. Right. And I think that's the important part. And it's a, a difficult balance because not everybody can be a good critiquer. They can't give good feedback on things. And um, you, even if somebody critiques well, they may not 
really fit with your type of writing or your story. So even if you find 20 people that are, are good at providing critiques, two of them may totally give you the opposite and not even really nail it with what you were doing. I, I had a book coach for a while that I finally cut it off because I, I realized after every time we talked, my, my thinking was, man, she just does not get what I'm writing. She And it wasn't the ego of, well, I write better than she can. It was really, she, she was saying things like, well, I, I don't understand why you put this here. And, oh, I suggest you make this like this. I'm like, well, that doesn't fit at all. Um, and, and so we, I cut it off and I found people since, and it's that are much better. And I have a, an author I know that spent years writing a book and uh, gave it to me to give some feedback. And I did. And every single one of the items I said, uh, you know, I, this isn't really that good. And here's why this could be improved. This could be changed. I don't understand this. Every single one of those he came back with, well, um, you don't get what I'm writing. No, you're wrong. You can't, that's not the right way to do it. And I'm like, well, why ask me to critique it? If you're going to tell me everything I'm critiquing is wrong. So you, you know, as the author, you have to find the right people and you have to be open and willing to hear what they're saying too. Right. I agree. Yeah. It's so do you go to, you said you don't have a critique group now. Have you done, uh, multiple critique groups? Do you do online critique groups? What have you done? Um, I think on it's so hard because I it's hard for me because I kind of want to know the people who I'm with the online ones. I want to know who I'm what their background is. Mm -hmm. I because I, I I love that like teenagers are loving and publishing books right now. I love that they love to do that. But at the same time, I'm like, you know, I, I want to encourage them and I know they can be kind of helpful to me, but there's a lot of things, you know, of experience that they don't know. So it's kind of hard. Cause I'm just like, I want someone who's more my peer rather than if I want to mentor somebody, I have no problem wanting to mentor somebody or, you know, get their feedback. But I want I kind of want to know who they are. I just don't want to just throw it to to people and and see, you know. Right. And I know there are online ones. There's a few good communities. Um, uh, Scribophile, I believe, is the one that I've gone to that I kind of like. I just don't always have the time to be reading lots of other people's stuff to get enough points that I could then put my own stuff up there. <laughs> so yeah. I, I'm in the same boat. I'm in the same boat. I'm just, I like, I want, I want to read everybody's cause I think that's fair. Right. But at the same time, it's like uh, another thing that would like we were talking about before, you know, with marketing, it's, this is another thing. Do right. I have time to be critiquing other people? You don't think about that. And another thing I found, I went to several good groups at some local libraries, but what I found was there wasn't enough time to be critiquing a whole book. So you would bring in a chapter or a short story, which can be good if you're new and you need some feedback on like a short story. But if you're writing a whole novel, just getting a critique on one chapter and then six months later, the next chapter, <laughs> it doesn't help a whole lot. Right. Uh, right. And, and then the people critiquing it can't help you with the overall flow of the story. They can just focus on that one chapter. So the feedback isn't necessarily always as good. And that's difficult. Yeah, I I totally agree. It's It's really hard to find the right people. It really is. But I, you know... One one of the things I think uh, some authors don't realize this, but reading other people's stuff and critiquing it is also good practice for reading and editing your own stuff. Plus then, like you said, to make it fair, if you're reading somebody's book, uh, you know, hopefully they're reciprocating and reading your book to provide feedback for each other. Right, right. <sighs> so have you uh, found any other like kids authors uh, with picture books that you've done any critiquing with? 
Um, I actually know a couple of middle grade writers that I talk with. And, Besides me. <laughs> yeah. And some, uh, some children's books. But it's hard. Like, it's, I feel like every time I go somewhere, I don't exactly fit in because like I really like to be in the community of like speculative fiction because I like to write my YA and adult stuff. And so that's the kind of the community I'm kind of in right now. And so finding, but being a children's book author, that doesn't mean anything to them. You know, they're not interested and they, they don't realize, oh yeah, she writes this stuff too. But I have to find, it's been, I I have found a few friends and stuff. Um, we, it's, it's not hard to, I, I don't know. Do you think it's difficult to, well, you, you write middle grade, so we do can get critiqued, but I'm thinking about picture books and how to get critiqued on picture books. Because for me, yeah. I, I think that one I just do myself. <laughs> now. One of the other things that I mentioned, I had a book coach for a while, um, and I know that can be, if you find the right person, that can be great to help with your story and get the critique at any level you might need. Because hopefully uh, it's a professional book coach, maybe somebody that also does editing or somebody that's a professional author um, like James right. uh, or something. He's, he's um, my coach. <laughs> Oh, you, you do calls with him every month? Yeah, but he's been helping me more on the marketing and uh, getting my confidence up, I okay. think, rather than um, I haven't sent him any of my, well, he's been reading, he's read my books after they've been published. And he, he and I talk uh, audiobooks since he does so many audiobooks and I do too. So, or I'm trying to start that. Right. Uh, you have to tell him I said hi. Uh, I'm pr- I'm going to be talking to him in a couple of weeks. Um, he's actually going to be on my podcast here soon. Oh, great. Great. Got an episode with him. Yeah. He's a, he's going to be a great guest. He's got that wonderful yeah. voice too. Right. <laughs> that podcasting yeah. voice. Uh, 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 yes. Uh, so have you thought of going to a library or something and offering to start a critique group yourself? No, just one more thing to add to the list, right? <laughs> That's, were you reading my mind? <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I mean, it's just hard because I, I think a lot of the times when you go and do that, I think I would be finding more new writers, which I, I, I mean, like I said, I don't mind helping mentor people, but I don't know if I want to help mentor a lot of people. Right. So, and then plus that you've got, I think too, what's been hard to find a critique group too, is that they only want to critique a certain type of writing. So it's like, I don't really want to be in, you know, I write four different genres, really. I don't want to be in four different critique groups. And like you said before, it's hard to find uh, someone that you, you're you going to get along with that can give you good feedback and good critique on your writing. And then someone that's actually go read it and do that instead of skimming through it and giving you one or two suggestions that don't help. Right. So I, I mean, I really truthfully, my, my mom's the one I know you, you people say, don't, don't use your mom. You know, my mom can give me criticism <laughs> And help me because she just, you know, I always, I feel like the same way about people that you care about when you critique their books, even if you're very close to them. I feel like, you know, if you had a hair sticking out of your nose, I'm going to tell you, <laughs> you know, right. I don't want right. you to go out in public with something like that. So I will not, I'll make sure your book is decent enough to go out there. And I, I think though it's, and they say family and stuff. Uh, it's hard. And I agree because they think they're going to hurt your feelings if they tell you about a problem or something that's bad. And that's the other problem with finding a critique partner uh, is if they're afraid to, if, if they're afraid they're going to hurt your feelings, then they're looking at it as something personal. But I look at it as this is uh, for business and it's my book and it's 
professional. You can give me the negative feedback. You can tell me what you don't like about it because I'd rather hear that now than get it published and get a one-star review and hear it from people who I don't even know. Uh, because then that'll sink the book. You know, I'm trying to fix these problems now. And I think family, a lot of times, unless they're also writers, they, they don't get that. Right, right. I, I know. I, I love my wife, um, but I know just about everything I give her. She was like, that was great. <laughs> okay, good. Glad you liked it. <laughs> but my son, he will go through and mark things. He'll cross things out. He'll write notes. And uh, he doesn't find everything. I don't think any critique partner finds everything, but he gives me some really good feedback that has helped me at times. Oh, that's good. Yeah. My husband, he, he's a nonfiction reader, so he's very difficult. I've made him read my books, but it's like, it's like pulling teeth, but I'm like, just please just cause he, he does a lot of professional writing. He, he does like contracts and stuff. Okay. So he is very, he can be very helpful, but he doesn't think he could be helpful because he's kind of bored. But, I, <laughs> you know, I'm like, I don't care. You know, I understand you don't want to read about a little girl. I, I get that. <laughs> well, the good thing is a lot of middle grade isn't super long. So right, right. <laughs> not forever. But I think truthfully, I've been surprised because a lot of like older gentlemen have loved Melanie on the move. <laughs> Really? I was just like, with the same with Marigold, as I found little boys, like really little boys love it. Because, Mm -hmm. uh, and I was just like really surprised about both. I'm like, oh, I didn't know I had this audience. (laughs) Wow. I'll have to keep that in mind. So, yeah. All right. Well, uh, JD, uh, it's been a really good conversation. Uh, Do you have any other comments on uh, critiquing? Um, Let's see. I'm thinking. <laughs> I That's okay. Think, I love the dis. I loved our discussion. I think it was yeah. great. I I just wish that I hope it's helps somebody. I, yes. I, I kind of was hoping too that they would think about that when they get a review as well. I think critiquing and review, it's kind of like, you know, how when you get reviews on, you know, what to focus on and stuff. Yes. Too. Uh, because. I, oh, I, I should add, you know, sometimes when you have critique, the pr- the reason why people are not critiquing you well is maybe they're not your audience. Like when you were talking about your book coach, she right. wasn't your, the reason why she couldn't be helpful, she wasn't really your audience. Uh, she probably, that's what I'm guessing anyway. Part of the problem is it takes a little experimenting and a little experience in writing yourself to realize uh who works good as a critique partner or coach and who wouldn't. Um, I was new. So I was like, Oh, a coach. Great. (laughs) You know? (laughs) Yeah. Um, JD, uh, before we go, do you have any advice for new authors? I would just say to um, it's, it's a lot of people want just make sure you're doing it for the right reason. Are you really passionate about writing or do you just want to write a book? Because there's a um, because if you just want to write a book, just write a book. I don't really have advice for that. Just write a book. But if you are passionate about writing, really try to learn as much as possible. Never stop learning. Always try to better yourself in your writing and uh, give yourself forgiveness too, because you're going to get better and better and you're going to be like, oh, I wrote that and it wasn't so good. But it's like, that was what you were writing back then and you just improve. Right. Yeah, definitely. Um, keep going and keep writing. That's, I think some people spend too much time on one thing editing forever when they should write lots of things and get better doing it that because I think you get better faster doing that. I think that's great advice, which I'm probably going to take. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 you write, uh, you know, children's pictures in middle grade. A lot of people don't understand that even if you want to write novels and mystery, whatever, you can write short stories. And because you can get short stories done quicker, you can write in multiple genres and improve your craft 
just writing a bunch of short stories. And you'll, if you write 20 short stories, by the time you get to the 20th one, your craft will be way better than if you spent the same amount of time re-editing one novel for that, you know, the same length of time. Uh, but that's what I'm discovering about myself. Well, that's great too, because then you're, you're kind of building an audience. If someone right. reads one of your little short stories, then they will go, oh, I like this writer. And they'll read your next one and your next one. You know, that's a way too to grow your audience. Yes. And there's ways you can then market those short stories. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, well, JD, uh, it's been great talking to you today about your books and about critiquing. I appreciate you taking some time to speak with me and everybody on the podcast. I I am so appreciative to be on here. It was a lot of fun. And thank you for making me feel so comfortable. Oh, great. Well, tell Jim that. Uh, that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, I talk to him next week. So I'll, I'll put that on my list of things I need to tell him. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Discovered Wordsmiths. Come back next week and listen to another author discuss the road they've traveled and maybe sometime in the near future, it might be you.